The following is a production of Cary TV, the town of Cary's government access channel. Hello, I'm Harold Weinbreck, Mayor of Cary, and this is Cary Matters, the monthly program designed to help keep you informed about issues that your council members are working on for our community. Joining me as co-host this month is Jack Smith, who has represented Cary's District C since 1989 and is our longest serving council member, maybe the longest serving council member ever. District C is mostly southeastern Cary. Jack, congratulations on your elect election and congratulations for all you've done for our community. We really appreciate everything you do and I'm so glad you're here. Thank you, Harold. Uh, it's a pleasure to join you today and thanks for your kind words on my reelection. I'm humbled for the opportunity to serve a seventh term doing what I love to do, serve the citizens of Cary. Congratulations also to my peers, Jennifer Robinson and Ed Yerha, who will both be returning to the council. That's great too. Are you ready to get started? I sure am. All right, why don't you give us a rundown of what we got on this month's episode? All right, well, f for the main topic this episode, we're gonna talk about the changes to the town's organizational structure, some of which are already underway. We're also going to be talking about public Wi-Fi, a wildlife issue, and champion trees. So Mayor, why don't you get us started by telling us what's going on with the new organizational structure. All right. Over the past several months, staff has completed an extensive review of its organizational structure with a goal to improve customer service and staff's responsiveness to council. This is the first big change in the organizational structure in decades with the exception of the establishment of Development Services Department in 1996, there have been no changes to, no major changes to the organizational structure approach to accomplish the annual work program. Basically, the flat organizational structure established in the 1980s to serve approximately 40,000 people was still in place. Since that time, the number of complex, uh, complex issues and town service programs have increased dramatically. This increased complexity com combined with a flat organization has led to problems with communication, coordination, and problem resolution. So over the past several months, staff reviewed the strengths and weaknesses of the current configuration and reviewed organizational structures of municipalities in North Carolina, Virginia, Georgia, and Texas, and as a result, came up with specific goals for the new structure. These goals include even a stronger focus on customer service to ensure coordinated responses and quicker follow through to council and our citizens, strengthening the organization's strategic focus and better defining roles to provide increased accountability and more timely decision making. To accomplish all this, the new organization will be divided into three functional areas, development services, infrastructure, and public safety and operations. The current assistant town manager will become the deputy town manager and will have responsibility over public safety and operations. Two new assistant town managers will have the responsibility for development services and infrastructure functions. The structure reduces the number of direct reports to the town manager and creates an executive management team that will focus on strategic issues and resolving interdepartmental issues. And the good news is that these changes will not result in an increase in the salary budget. That is good news. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. The council approved these changes at its November meeting and implementation of these changes is already underway. 
The town manager expects to have the reorg in place and fully functioning by the spring. In fact, he plans to develop his proposed annual budget, budget using the new structure this May. Harold, you may know that my professional expertise is in organizational development. And from that professional point of view, I can tell you that I'm really excited about the changes. They make sense. And out of all these changes, the biggest change will be how we serve our citizens. While we believe we provide great customer service at the town of Cary, we also believe we can always do better. And that helps us support our mission, which is, at the town of Cary, we focus every day on enriching the lives of our citizens by creating an exceptional environment and providing exemplary services that enable our community to thrive and prosper. Amen to that. Well, coming up after the break, we're going to tackle some of the questions we've been hearing from you. We're back. Thanks for staying with us. It's time now for us to address some of those questions the council's been getting from you. Jack, do you have any questions? We are frequently asked if the town is planning public Wi-Fi, especially in the un underserved areas of the town. Yeah, we are asked that. <laughs> That's a good question. Even though we know that more than 96% of Cary residents have access to the internet, we'd like that number to be higher possible. And that's one of the reasons we're participating in the NCNGN project, which is better known as GIGU. Folks from around the Triangle have been meeting weekly, working through the process of how to provide public Wi-Fi for almost a year. Carrie's represented by our Technology Services Director, Bill Stice, and along with others, has been reviewing proposals and meeting with prospective vendors. And one of the requirements in the proposal was to have high-speed wireless available to underserved areas. There have been several models for this type of subscription service used throughout the country by various vendors. The goal is to get free Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi for a very nominal fee. The group hopes to be able to make recommend a recommendation within the next several months. So the short answer, Jack, is we're working on it. <laughs> Do you have anything else? I do. We've received questions about our large population of squirrels <laughs> and the concern that residents feeding the squirrels contributes to that growing population. Oh, wow. That sounds like a very difficult, sensitive, complicated topic. So why don't you use all those years of experience and answer that one? Well, I can tell you that there is no ordinance preventing people from feeding squirrels. However, animal control strongly suggests not doing this for many reasons. A large population of squirrels will require lots of nesting areas, which could mean your attic space. And this, of course, causes property damage. And we have had reports of this occurring in town. In addition, feeding squirrels by hand can be dangerous since some of them carry diseases. So the best thing to do is leave the squirrels alone. And don't worry about them going hungry, because hungry, they get plenty to eat in my backyard. And mine, too. Do you have any other questions? One more. We've been getting questions about champion trees. Some people think our ordinance is not strict enough to protect trees, and some people think that we are too strict. And all they want to know is, how we plan on resolving all this? And that's another good question. Well, first of all, it's important to understand what a champion tree is. These are trees that are 30 inches in diameter, and of course, we're not talking about saving trees that are diseased or dying. 
In October, the council reviewed this topic and directed staff to hold a meeting of stakeholders, which took place in November. The stakeholders meeting had folks with development interests and folks that, who are passionate about tree protection. The stakeholders group came up with many great points for the council to consider in a future land development ordinance amendment for champion trees. Hopefully this will give us a good balanced solution to this issue. That's right, and we should be voting on that sometime in January. You know, our goal has always been to protect trees whenever possible without being unreasonable. Cary has a track record of protecting our environment while remaining business friendly. And as you noted, I'm confident we will be able to strike the right balance. That's right. Got to have places for all those squirrels to live, you know. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, coming up after the break, we're going to give you some insights into what's going on at Town Hall in December and how you can be involved and included. The Town of Cary invites you to kick off the season with a full day of holiday cheer in downtown Cary. On Saturday, December 7th, enjoy the heart of the holiday celebration that features a host of activities including Santa and the Town of Cary's Christmas tree lighting celebration. If you still need fun gift ideas, try Cary Theater movie passes, a Skate Cary membership, fitness passes, or even a Parks and Recreation gift card. Bring the whole family. It's the heart of the holidays in Cary. For more information, visit townofcary.org. We're back. In this final segment of Carry Matters, we want to let you know what's happening in December, a very busy month, and how you can be involved. Jack, why don't you start us out? Okay, December has two scheduled council meetings. On Thursday the 12th will be the swearing-in ceremony for the council members starting their new terms. We will also hold quasi-judicial hearings that evening. On Thursday the 19th, the council will hold its last scheduled council meeting of the year. The Operations Committee will meet on Thursday the 5th at 5.30 and the Planning and Development Committee meeting will meet on Wednesday the 11th at 5.30. The Council also has a work session scheduled for Tuesday the 17th at 5 p.m. and the agenda is packed. We'll be looking at an update on the rezoning process, an update on the downtown park and st streetscape projects, and a review of our boards and commissions annual goals, just to name a few of the topics. Wow. That's a lot of meetings, but there's a lot of fun things going on this month, too. On Saturday, December 7th, the Old Time Winter Festival will be held in downtown, and that will be followed that evening with the tree lighting ceremony at Town Hall. The following Saturday, December 14th, will be the annual JC's Christmas Parade, and that is always a hoot. And there's also a lot of holiday entertainment in December. The Cary Players will be doing a Christmas story at the Cary Arts Center starting on Thursday the 5th and going through Monday the 9th. The Concert Singers of Cary will also be performing at the Cary Arts Center with Holiday Pops, which is on the 13th and 14th. And the Cary Town Band presents Winter's Eve on the 13th at the Cary Senior Center. And this is just some of the entertainment in December. So to find out more what's going on in Cary in December, go to the town's website at townofcary.org and select calendar. Since there are town holidays this month, that means that town offices will be closed and some solid waste collection schedules will change. Town offices will be closed on December 24th, 25th, and 26th. Be sure to review your solid waste holiday collection schedule mailed to you, or if you've lost it, take a look online. Well, that's it for this edition of Cary Matters. We appreciate your watching and hope that what we've shared with you has been interesting. Please let us hear from you about the topics discussed on this show. Because your time is important, we want Cary Matters to be of value to you as we work to bring you, our citizens, closer to your government. Enjoy the holidays and remember, help keep Cary litter free, clean, green, and beautiful by volunteering with our Spruce program. Thanks for watching and as always, thanks for choosing to call Cary home.
This has been a production of Cary TV. Visit the Town of Cary's website at townofcary.org.